fireman that came to you, uh, you want a library, you want all of this stuff, who's paying for it? You are by being taxed. And then the last one is if you die with no will or no heirs, your property will get absorbed by the government and then resold out to somebody else. So those are the four governmental powers that nobody gets. Nobody is exempt from his cheat. Nobody is exempt from, well, <laughs> nobody's exempt from eminent domain. Nobody's exempt from the police powers. So when we talked about fee simple absolute a minute ago, we only talked about this amount because no one gets those. <laughs> Let's talk about property taxes. I'm gonna get to do some more math I know you guys like. All right. So property taxes is called, there are two types. There's an ad valerum, which means at value. value. It's a very simplistic math model. You take the assessed value times the equalization factor times the tax rate. All right, the assessed value is something you don't have, they will give you $125,000. Now, don't get caught up in the confusion factor. They're going to give you a bunch of stuff on the test, like it was appraised at 100, you borrowed 110, it was assessed at 125. When you're dealing with taxes, it's the assessed value that you want, not the loan amount, not the purchase price, not the appraised value, not what Santa Claus thought it was worth, not what you thought it was worth. It's what the government actually assessed the property at. They will give you this number in the equation because you can't figure it. The next thing is this equalization factor. Once again, they will give you it because you cannot figure it. All right. If they don't mention it, the equalization factor is one. Everybody's house is equal. They will either lower it or raise it. I don't want to get into confusing you with right now, who cares? All you need to know is they can give it an equalization factor of 1.1. They can give it an equalization factor of 0.9. It will be given to you in the exam. The one that you will have issues with is this thing here called the tax rate. The tax rate is expressed in a mill which means one one thousandth of a dollar. Or that is the same. If you make a mistake, it is right here. So if someone told you it was 84 mils, Somebody tell me what that is in decimal form. Zero point zero eight four. He wrote zero point zero eight four. Is he correct? Who have we not heard from yet? Norma, we'll pick on you. 
I believe that's correct. Big vote of confidence. <laughs> okay, yes. That is in fact correct. If you want to know how to do it, here's one way. 84 mils divided by a thousand because it's you get that number. That's where you, most of you will make the mistake if you do on this math problem. So if the assessed value is 116,000, it has an equalization factor of 0.1 and the mills are 17 mills. My question to you is, how much are the monthly taxes? This is a common question that you will get from your client. So everybody go. Guess I should do this too. $1,972, maybe. Uh-uh, $19.72. Say it again. I got $19.72. Donna, what'd you say? I said $1,972. Am I not doing something right? $197.20. What? 197 and 20 cents. Well, you guys all hit off by a factor of two. Let me make it easy for you. All three of these are actually wrong. Do we divide by 12? I got the got you on the oldest book in the trick in the book. I just heard one of you say it. Divide by twelve. You said monthly taxes. I said monthly um, taxes. One sixty four thirty three. And by the way, this answer is correct for the annual nineteen seventy two. So you had 116,000 times the equalization factor, which was what? One. In this particular one. case, 1.0, 1 so that's still 116,000 times the tax rate of 17 mils. That is 0 0.017. This gets you at $1,972. But remember, this is a annual, and I ask you by the month, you must divide that by 12. This trick will be on the exam. And they will have this number as one of the answers. So the correct answer was what we just said a minute ago. Thought I wrote it down. Maybe I didn't. One hundred sixty-four dollars and thirty-three cents a month. Again. Say that again. Let's do it again. All right, we'll do one more. It's a $125,000 sale price. The assessed value is 80% of the sales price. The equalization factor is 1.2. And the tax rate, this is a high in Florida, is 125 mils. I want to know the annual taxes. Actually, I want to know the semi-annual taxes. 
I want to know the semi-annual taxes. Seven thousand five hundred. I guess I should do the math. I got somebody's speaker needs to be turned off or duct tape your children. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not politically correct. <laughs> Whoever said that, that's what I got. I threw another little trick in there on you. I hope somebody caught it. I told you the assessed value is 80% of the sales price. So you've got to take 125,000 times 0.8. So you get the assessed value is 100 grand. From there, you multiply it by the equalization factor of 1.2. So now you've got 125,000 or 120,000. The mills are 0 0.125. When you do this 120,000 times 0.125, you get 15 grand but that is an annual number. I asked for the semi-annual. So this is where you get $7,500. Everybody get it? What did, what did you say that one, when you said when you got a hundred grand, what do we do after the hundred grand? We divided it by the 1.20? We multiplied it multiplied. by the equalization factor of gotcha. 1.2. Okay. So 100,000 times 1.2 is $120,000. Then you multiply that by the tax rate, which is this number, and you get this 15 grand, but that would be the annual because ad volarum is an annual tax. So divide it by two because we want the semi-annual, that's where we get this number. Now, there is this thing called a special assessment tax and a special assessment tax can be billed typically one time. It is a one-time event for something like new sidewalks or a new sewer system or something like that. It's typically billed at one time, but the payment can be spread out over 10 years at $1,000 Per year to help you so that you don't get a ten thousand dollar bill all at one shot all right so special assessments are usually billed once but can be paid over time because that one-time bill is so large they don't want to stick you with hey this year you got a ten thousand dollar tax they just say, hey, this year we're going to add $1,000 on your taxes for 10 years to pay for the new sidewalks and streets that you got in your neighborhood. That is a special assessment tax. It's typically one spot. You guys need to take a break? All right. 
We've talked a little bit about building codes already, zoning, uh, special types of lands, wetlands, flood zones. Flood zone is a area adjacent a river that gets wet. It's run by flood waters. And the flood water is where the river runs up into the property. That would create a flood zone. The building codes are part of what we talked about. Let's see if I can do it this way here. The building codes are that whole thing that a part of the governmental powers, remember? Because they don't want you to build something that's not safe. So the building codes are part of the police powers, which are inside the governmental power. Lead-based paint's probably the number one environmental hazard. What year for lead-based paint? 78. 1978. Anything 1978 or before, you got to have the lead-based paint form. It has to be delivered from the seller to the buyer. The buyer would then sign it and send it back, saying that he saw it when the buyer sends the offer to the seller as well. How do you abate or mitigate is the word lead? How do you cover? How do you clean it? How do you take care of it? What's the word I'm looking for? Encapsulation. But Encapsulation. I thought that was. That is how you take care of lead. You simply paint over it. What so you is the that for too? environmental hazard that uses encapsulation asbestos asbestos also encapsulates okay so i didn't know lead this paint was supposed so to be. the remediation for both of these is encapsulation Do we have any questions about environmental? Shauna, did you remember any questions on the exam about that? The one thing that they touched bases on was um, radon, radon and um, I cannot think of the, I know it was talking about those chemicals because I had to go back. Where does radon come from? Underneath the earth. Right. It is a natural decomposition. So it comes up through the soil. It is a carcinogen. What does the word carcinogen mean? That means it's hazardous, right? Carcinogen specifically means cancer causing. Cancer causing, okay. Specifically means cancer causing. It is a colorless, odorless. That's what they ask. Um, byproduct. All right. Anything else about an environmental? Nope. I don't think there's really much on environmental. I think they just touched on that. They didn't really touch on nothing else for me. And lead based paint. So with dealing with deed restrictions, they have these things called CCRs, covenants, conditions, and restrictions. Who puts the CCR on these properties? Think of these like layers. Your top layer is like the zoning. That is put on by the government. Then the builder puts something on, and then the bottom one would be the HOA. So the builder would put on CCRs. 
conditions, covenants, and restrictions. He is the one that's going to say, hey, if you want to buy this lot, this piece of land, I'll sell it to you, but I am not giving you absolute. I am going to tell you that you have to build a 5,000 square foot house so that you do not hurt your neighbor's value. All right. That is a covenant condition and a restriction. This is telling you by the builder what you're going to build so that my house has a value of a million so that when you sell your house that's in the neighborhood, you want it to be a million as well. These are all private, meaning we do this to ourselves. Zoning, we talked about in the previous one. Any questions about zonings or homeowners associations? Once again, this whole course is on, this whole section is only three, going to be about three or four questions of the entire exam so far when we're dealing with this. So you've got governmental controls where zoning deals with. That's the layer here that I told showed you about. You then have deeds and restrictions. This is the CCR. And then the lower one is the homeowners association. All right. I'm backing up, but I'm backing up, but was there any remediation for radon? Yes. Was there such a thing as remediation for that? I'm going, to use, I'm going to use this slide just because there's more white space. But radon actually has a remediation. So if the, radon's going to come up through the floor, all right? So we have this system called a radon mitigation system, which basically pulls the air, sucks the air in, and shoots it outside. So when the radon comes up, it goes out and it's being sucked in there like that. It's very analogous or very similar to um, a sump pump. You know, you've got a sump pump in here in the corner. Oh, that was wrong. You've got a sump pump here in the corner and that sump pump sucks all the water in and then allows you to pump that water out. You've got a sump pump and the water comes in, seeps in, and then you pump it outside. Only they use like a buried line. We have the same thing over here with radon. It's called a radon mitigation system. I don't like this one. It doesn't have as many. There's really no eraser here. I got to erase all of it. So that was the radon. So yes, there is a radon mitigation system. Okay, thank you. All right. I hope other people are back. So let's roll on uh, and finish out where we're going. In this next section, they're going to talk a little bit about appraisals. Uh, once again, 7%, so it's very, it's not a very huge section, but then again, they all kind of add up. So the question that I'm talking about here is, uh, what's the, the purpose of the appraisal? Obviously, the purpose of the appraisal is for valuation. It is an opinion of an educated person to determine what the value is. If the general steps, remember, they start here with the problem and then they choose the uh, neighborhood. And there are two types of properties or two types of data. We have general data, which this would be about the neighborhood. 
You know, is it delivered? Is it being controlled by REOs? Is there a lot of bank owned homes? Then you have specific data. He would collect all of this. And the specific data would be the actual, you know, how many beds and baths per property? What's the square footage? All of the stuff that would be required of a uh, appraiser to use. So those are the numbers, so to speak. <clears throat> uh, certified appraiser. Remember, any house under 250000 doesn't require a license, but most lenders now want that anyway. So the USPAP, the Uniform Standard of Professional Appraisal Practice, actually calls out that any property under that value does not require a licensed appraiser, but most lenders do. So now we use uh, loans through the, almost all loans require an appraisal. All right. So we're gonna talk, I'm sure a little bit more hopefully here about, yeah, let's talk about the value and how to estimate it. So we're gonna switch over to a better program. Remember, value is defined by four things. What's the anagram? Demand, utility, scarcity, and transferability. Those are the four things that can manipulate value. Demand, supply and demand, utility. How many different ways can we use the property? Scarcity. Dude, I went to a friend of mine's property this weekend on Lake Sweetwater. And these little cabins on Sweetwater were built in 1970 and they're all about 1200 square feet and they all list in the $800,000 range because it's on property, it's on the lake, very scarce. That's a great example of how scarcity drives the property up. This property, if you took his house, well, not his, it's different. If you took some of those houses and moved them to like this neighborhood, probably be a $100,000 house. Sitting on Sweetwater, it was an $800,000 house. So scarcity and demand have a lot for that. And transferability. How easy is the property transfer? All four of these items deal with the value of a property. They dictate what happens with the value. All right, so they wanna talk a little bit about the sales comparison approach. The sales comparison approach is also known, we use this as the CMA, comparative, comparative market analysis, all right? The principle behind the substitution method says that if my client wants me to list a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot property on one acre, if I go out and search all of the other properties that if I find all these others and they are three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square feet, on one acre and it sold for 130. And I found a second one, three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot, one acre, sold for 132. And then a third one, cause we always use three. Under the principle of substitution, which is what a residential appraiser will do, but it's the same thing we do here. It's very easy to tell your client, your property is valued somewhere between 130 and 134. The principle of substitution says, if I'm listing this property and it substitutes for any of these, 
then you can 